Every week, so much happens in your own country that it's often hard to keep track of the news at home, let alone around the world. So, in the next eight minutes, I'm going to walk you through some of the week's biggest news stories, but we'll be moving fast. So, if you want to find out more about any of the stories, then there's article recommendations in the description. This week's biggest stories include the growth of China's influence in Europe, more Brazilian scandals, and outrage over weed at the Olympics. Let's start with some sad news though. This week has been full of natural disasters around the world, so let's take a moment to look at each of them in turn. Japan suffered a major landslide this weekend, which killed at least two people in the coastal city of Atami. This slide was sparked by heavy rain, with just three days seeing more rainfall than the entire area normally gets in the month of July. The city most impacted is a popular resort area, and at the time of writing, rescue teams are still working in the region, saving at least 19 people so far, including a 75-year-old couple. Other areas have also been impacted, with people in surrounding regions being told to evacuate. On the other side of the disaster spectrum, both Canada and Cyprus have been hit by wildfires. Cyprus's fires have been fanned by strong winds, spreading them for miles, making this disaster one of the worst fires the country has ever experienced. At least four people are currently missing, but the full death count and impact is as yet unknown, with several other nations sending in firefighting aircraft to help tackle the blaze and save lives. The cause of the blaze isn't certain yet, but a 67-year-old man has been arrested on suspicion of arson. Over in Canada, we do know how the fires started. Lightning strikes. But that doesn't really help in a crisis where more than 170 fires blazed. At least two people have been killed in these fires thus far, but it isn't over yet. The issue was exacerbated by the warm weather the country has currently been experiencing, with record temperatures of 49.6 degrees Celsius, leaving forests dry and, unfortunately, ready to burn. Doctors Without Borders are an incredible charity who do great work to assist in disasters around the world, helping local communities cope and protecting those in need. If you want to lend them a hand and show some global unity, then you can grab one of our Globe With Shoes pin badges. For every pin sold, we'll give £2 to MSF. The link's down below, and thanks for supporting both TLDR and those in need. Let's move to China, where ByteDance, the people behind TikTok, have started selling their AI tech to other companies. This does make some sense, considering TikTok's USP is their For You algorithm, an algorithm which can keep people scrolling for minutes, sorry, hours, no, sorry, days. This new branch of the company, Byte Plus, actually has its main hub of operation outside of China, in Singapore, with them also picking up more staff in London and Hong Kong. This is all part of a concerted effort to grow the company, offer their technology, including computer vision and data analysis tech, while broadening their revenue streams ahead of a rumoured IPO. Even if you don't use TikTok, you probably haven't been able to avoid them if you've been watching the Euros, with the company being a major sponsor of the competition. This might feel like a weird thing to note, but it's part of an interesting transition whereby Chinese brands like Hisense, Vivo, Alipay, Antchain, and of course TikTok have begun sponsoring Western events more than ever. According to a senior market analyst speaking to the BBC, Europe is becoming an increasingly important market for Chinese companies, so it might be unsurprising that they're backing the sport. UEFA have also supported this logic, reporting that they had no specific strategy to attract Chinese partners, but that their backing showed the global audience that football attracts. Maybe there's another reason though, because Hisense, the only Chinese company who sponsored the contest in 2016, reportedly didn't see a boost in Europe following their sponsorship. Maybe then it's not Europe they're trying to attract, maybe it's the man at the top. With regulatory pressure rising, some have speculated that sponsors are trying to curry favour with Xi Jinping, a man who famously enjoys football. Regardless, if you do like TikTok, then you probably ought to give us a follow. Regular viewers might remember that last week we spoke about the Brazilian environmental minister, 
who left his post due to scandals surrounding corruption and the logging industry. Well, a similar thing has emerged this week in the health ministry. This week, a high-ranking official was fired following allegations that they'd asked for a bribe when negotiating over the AstraZeneca vaccine. With questions also being raised about the negotiation process surrounding the Indian jab, a vaccine which Brazil procured through a third party for three times more than any other vaccine the country bought. A little suspicious, I think you'll agree. So it's understandable why this official was let go, especially considering the wider public unrest in Brazil, with thousands taking to the streets to protest the government's handling of the virus, as the country's death toll crossed 500,000, the world's second highest after only the US. Things could be getting worse though, with the same whistleblower alleging misconduct by Bolsonaro too, so it looks like his government's Covid reckoning might be far from over, even with this official out. Staying in the Americas, last week Mexico's Supreme Court ruled 8-3 to three that adults will be allowed to apply for permits to grow and consume their own cannabis. This is big news for the country, but many have pointed out that this decriminalization does not decriminalize the activities necessary to carry out much of consumption, such as the possession and transportation of the drugs, making it hard to implement these changes quickly. Let's stay on weed for a moment though, because the drug has caused major controversy in the US, specifically surrounding US track star Shakiri Richardson. The athlete was barred from competing at the Tokyo Olympics last week following a positive test for cannabis. Richardson supposedly used medical marijuana to deal with the recent passing of her mother a week before her drug trials. Trials which took place in Oregon, where weed is legal. Despite this, the drug is on the World Anti-Doping Agency's list of prohibited substances. To get on the list, drugs must meet two of the three criteria. Enhancing performance, posing a health risk, or violating the spirit of the sport. According to WADA, weed can enhance athletes' performance, but others are very sceptical, insisting that evidence is sparse and is actually just a continuation of cannabis laws rooted in racism rather than science. The US also made news when Biden ordered airstrikes against Iranian-backed militias in both Iraq and Syria last week. We don't have time to discuss this here, but we did do a deep dive into that and the US's approach in the region more generally in a video over on the TLDR US channel. It's linked down below. Speaking of which, the US has officially left their primary base in Afghanistan, marking a significant withdrawal from the country, whereby the majority of US forces have now departed. The Afghan military are taking over control of the airfield and 600 US troops will be staying behind to protect the country's diplomatic mission. But this is still a huge shift, especially considering the Taliban's gains in the country recently. How the country will cope without the US on the ground, well, that's still up in the air at the moment. Penultimately, let's turn to Myanmar. You might remember that earlier in the year, a military junta took over the country, overthrowing the government in a coup. During the coup and in the months afterwards, thousands of protesters and journalists were arrested in an attempt to silence dissent, a largely unsuccessful move with much of the country still deeply unhappy with their new leaders. Maybe they realised the unpopularity of this move then, and in an attempt to turn the tide, the junta released 2,300 people including some activists and journalists. This might make some happier, but the mood of the country isn't likely to shift all that easily. With thousands still in prison, 883 dead, and a human rights expert in the area calling it a quite meaningless release, intended just to appease the international community. Finally, some good news though. It was announced by the World Health Organization that China is officially malaria-free, joining a list of 40 other nations. The sad part of this story is that to this day, every two minutes a child dies of malaria. But progress made by China and other countries shows that becoming malaria-free is a viable and possible objective. The learnings from China are set to be shared, making the country's work not just a beacon of hope, but also something that other countries around the world can directly learn from. 
So those were some of the biggest global news stories from the last week. And if 8 minutes wasn't enough for you, then there's links to further reading in the description. If you think we missed anything, then comment below the stories you'd like to see us cover in future episodes. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.